So I saw The Shift on opening weekend and overall, I think it's a great movie. There's a lot of garbage coming out these days, so it's actually really refreshing to see Angel Studios producing films that are worth watching. I also saw The Sound of Freedom, which was a great film and had a great message. And that's one thing I like about Angel Studios is that they want their films to impact their audience and to make a difference in their lives. Through their efforts, they're trying to bring about change to the world for good, for the better, which can anyone really complain about that? Well, that's what I'm here for. Now this is not a movie review. I'm not a movie critic, but I am a Christian, and this movie has a lot of biblical undertones, so that obviously gives me the right to say whatever I want about it. Don't you know that's how this works? Just kidding. You're not funny. But I wanted to give my thoughts on the movie, the good, the bad, but also my concerns. And my concerns are not just for this movie specifically, but for Angel Studios as a whole, just based on few of the things I've seen them produce so far. So let's get right into this. Just a warning, there may be a little bit of spoiling in this video, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, Go watch it and come back. Now, on to the good. So this movie is supposed to be a modern retelling version of the book of Job. And when I say modern, they mean very modern, like the future. <laughs> There's a whole multiverse aspect to the film, which I thought was really cool, and I think they actually pulled it off pretty well. It was a bit confusing at times, but nothing you wouldn't be able to figure out by the end. Especially in this age, when there's so many films about the multiverse and all their ways of explaining it, I think they did just fine. You'll never leave one of those movies without some questions left unanswered. I have so many questions. But again, they did just fine with it. The visuals were great. The acting was great. It felt well budgeted, well produced, kept me engaged the whole time. The music was phenomenal. There's really not much to complain about looking at it purely from a movie aspect. It wasn't the most amazing film I've ever seen, but it was pretty good. I also like that they incorporated scripture throughout the movie. I'll never complain about that. I also really enjoyed the antagonist, the benefactor. He's the Satan figure of the movie, and just like in the book of Job, the benefactor's primary purpose is to ruin Kevin's life, Kevin being the main character, and to get him to doubt God and to turn away from God. In case anyone watching doesn't know, in the book of Job, in the Bible, Satan comes up to God, and God asks him what he's been up to. And God asks, have you considered my servant Job? He is blameless. And Satan tells God that the only reason Job worships him, and loves him, and fears him, is because God has blessed him and protects him from all the evil around him. God then gives Satan permission to take everything away from him except to spare his life. He loses everything. He loses all his wealth, his livestock, his houses, his land. His health is taken away. His skin's falling apart. He has boils everywhere. And he even loses his children. God tests Job. And at the end of the book, God restores everything back to Job twofold. It's, it's really a wonderful story. And it's funny because it's about addressing the question of why does God allow good people to suffer? Which is really neat if you think about it because Job, they say, is probably the oldest written book that we have. It's probably one of the oldest, if not the oldest book in the Bible. And it's all about answering the question of why does God allow people to suffer? Why does a good God allow evil? We are literally still asking that question today. Nothing's really changed, has it? So that's the primary purpose of that book. And that's the primary purpose of this movie. The benefactor comes up to Kevin and ends up ruining his life. It's not as black and white as the book of Job, and the benefactor has other reasons for why he picks Kevin in the film, but that's not important for this video. But the movie did such a good job with asking the tough questions. Where is God in the midst of all this evil in the world? Where is the God of love when there's so much suffering? How does God let Satan run wild and ruin people's lives while he sits back and does nothing? Why isn't he doing anything about all the chaos and evil in the world? Why do good people suffer? We see these things happening in real life all around us every day. So for the movie to ask these questions to get the audience to think, I think they nailed it. They really did a good job at presenting this idea in the movie. Now, on to the bad. 
So the movie says it's a modern retelling of Job, and it takes a couple verses from the book of Job and throws it up on the screen throughout the film to give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on, but I honestly wish they didn't bring the whole Job idea into this film. I actually couldn't agree more with John from What Do You Mean? But my biggest gripe, and honestly, it really does pain me to say this, but my biggest gripe about the film was that even though the story was based on the book of Job, because there was so much happening in the film, it almost felt like the story of Job was more of an afterthought that was added to the film later, rather than it being the basis for the film. Or in other words, it felt more loosely inspired by the book of Job, rather than it being a one-to-one -one correlation with the story. So I'm not gonna lie, that part was a little disappointing because I was waiting for the more memorable parts of the book of Job to be reenacted. I felt almost the exact same way because for someone who really knows the book of Job, they can see just how off this was. At one point in the movie, Kevin is telling the story of Job to a family who wants to hear some Bible stories and Kevin's describing it pretty well, but then he mentions how Job loses his wife along with everything else. But Job never loses his wife in the Bible. His wife turns on him, but he never loses her. And you might think, Colin, you're just being nitpicky. But the entire point of this movie is Kevin trying to find his wife again after he loses her due to the workings of the benefactor. So for someone who doesn't know the book of Job, they may think that's what it's all about, and it's not. That's way off. It's not even close. But the biggest problem I see, like I said, they asked all the right questions, but they gave all the wrong answers. At the climax of the movie, you get the benefactor testing Kevin, putting him through these trials, pain, tribulation, and he puts him in this impossible position and really gets him to question God's love for him. And he starts asking him, why are you staying faithful to God when he's not helping you? He reminds him how God has forsaken him. God has left him and God is nowhere to be found. Give up already. What are you holding on to? And throughout the film, Kevin does have some good answers. Like he points to scripture to show that even righteous men suffered in the Bible, but that didn't mean God didn't love them. But at the climax of the film, Kevin's answer was pretty much along the lines of, we are not the worst of our decisions and we're not the best of our decisions but as long as we aren't selfish and we choose to be kind to others in the end good will triumph over evil and now if you're at all familiar with my channel you would know that at that point my eyes rolled so far in the back of my head I was actually seeing the film in the next theater <laughs> Kevin was presented with how will you overcome all this evil? His answer was to be kind. Find it in the goodness of your heart to be the good person that you are meant to be. Don't only choose what you want for yourself. Stop being so selfish. But that is the furthest thing from what the Bible wants you to know. That is the furthest thing from what God wants us to know. The Bible talks about how only God is good. Only God is righteous. Only God is love and kind and patient. And all of us, we're the bad guys. We are the evil. We are the selfish. We are the wicked. We are the liars, the thieves, the murderers, the adulterers, God haters. All of us have gone astray. All of us are children of wrath. All of us are dead in our trespasses and sins. We are unthankful and we love our sin more than him. And because of that, we deserve God's judgment, which is his wrath against our sin. There's no good in us. There's nothing we can present to overcome the evil in this world. We are the evil in this world. We're the problem. But fortunately, the story doesn't end there. Because God is love, because God is merciful and kind, he will not just leave us to ourselves. He is compassionate and has no desire for the wicked to perish. So God, out of his love toward us, made the difference to overcome the evil in the world and the evil in our lives and the evil in ourselves. He sent his son Jesus into the world who lived a perfect, sinless life. Jesus was righteous in every way. Jesus overcame evil in every way. He was tempted in all ways as we are except without sin. He earned God's righteousness, but that's not all he did. He also willingly gave up his life. He was whipped, tortured, 
beaten. The evil that we created, we unleashed upon him as we nailed him to a tree and killed him. But spiritually, something else was happening too. God the Father was pouring out his wrath upon him. He crushed him. He punished him in our place. What we deserve from a righteous God is what Jesus took on the cross. So Jesus earns the righteousness of God and he also takes the punishment from God that we deserve and he dies. But still, praise God, it doesn't end there. Jesus rose from the grave three days later, defeating sin and death forever, and he has sent his spirit into the world. And anyone who repents of their sin and puts their trust in Jesus, for anyone who turns from their life of sin to following Christ, will have newness of life, forgiveness of sins, and eternal life in Christ Jesus. Jesus saves us not just from the consequence of sin, but also from the power of sin. Jesus saves us from hell, but he also sent his spirit so that we can overcome the sin in our lives, so that we can be made more holy, more righteous, more like him. This is all part of the Father's plan for his elect. Which now brings me to my concerns for Angel Studios. I saw the movie with my family and afterward I asked them what they thought of the movie. And my brother-in-law said to me, it was a good movie with a great message, but it stinks that it lacked Christ and how the motivation for us doing good should be found in him and not in ourselves. And I couldn't agree more. Those were my exact thoughts too when I left the theater. After the movie, Angel Studios had a special message for anyone who wanted to stay, and they basically just give the audience the opportunity to pay it forward and buy a ticket for someone else who can't afford to see it, which is really cool, I like that they do that. They wanna bring good content back to the theaters. Which, again, like I said in the beginning of this video, I think that's a great thing. But then they talked about how we need to be kind to each other, and it's the gestures of kindness that change the world for the better, and how we need to love everyone, which I don't disagree with. That's a wonderful thing, and we should be doing that. And I love that a movie theater is promoting that. Movies don't just have to be garbage, but if our motivation isn't because of Christ or for changing lives through the power of the gospel, then it won't matter in the long run because people, people can only be kind for so long before our old nature kicks back in. Doing a whole bunch of good works is only going to earn you a cooler spot in hell. Without the power of the gospel changing someone's life, it's not going to last long and eventually we're going to end up right back to where we are now. Like I said, they are addressing the problem but giving the wrong answers. This is like a band-aid. It's not fixing the actual problem, which is sin. If Angel Studios decides to preach goodness without Christ, it will eventually become the woke Disney monster that it's working so hard against. It's such a big frustration of mine and it's one of the reasons why I actually started this this channel. It's because there's so many false gospels out there, and not just very obvious ones like the Roman Catholic Church or Jehovah's Witnesses. There are false gospels and false messages like this one that sound really good but do not save you from hell, or they don't put you in a right relationship with God. Be good, promote love. God loves you and sees your pain and your hurts and, and he just wants to help you. God has a plan for your life. And you can finish it with God's help. You are unique. Nobody can take your place. And God needs you in his kingdom. God would never hurt you. That's why he gave Jesus to die on a cross for your sins so that we can go to heaven one day when he comes back and we'll get out of all this mess. God is on my side. He's got a good plan for my life. I want you to know tonight that you're valuable, that God loves you more than you could even possibly imagine, that he's not mad at you, that you are pleasing to him. You see that message everywhere today. You see it in churches that promote LGBTQ stuff. You see it in progressive churches. You see it in He Gets Us. You see it in so many online ministries today. Their main message is to love one another and be kind to one another. But what good will that do you on Judgment Day? You still have sin that needs to be dealt with. There's still a holy God that you're going to have to face and all your goodness is just a filthy rag before him. And all you're going to be left with is the fierce anger of his fury 
which will destroy you. You need a savior. You need someone to pay your penalty and to give you the righteousness you need to stand before God. You need someone to give you newness of life, turning from your old self, your old pleasures of gratifying your flesh, to living in the newness of the spirit, to newness of life so you can walk right with God. Eternal life is knowing God, and that's only found in the gospel in the person of Christ. I know I sound like a broken record, and I know not everyone appreciates what I'm saying. Again, I really do like the content that Angel Studios is producing, but don't make it a substitute for your Bible reading or for going to church. Don't let it be a substitute for fellowship with true Christians. Even a good message can be considered a bad message if it keeps you from the best message. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.